A while ago, I got a shoebox with some PC parts. So, this is what we have. I got two CPUs. One is Intel Core i3-540, it's a 3rd generation 1156 socket CPU and the other is Intel Pentium G3240, 1150 socket. We have two GPUs. This one is MSI 7950GT, this is a 512MB GDDR3 GPU, released back in 2006, but back in time this was a real beast. And the other GPU is Gigabyte NVIDIA GTX 960 with 4GB GDDR5 video memory. This is still good GPU and I have exact the same a couple of years ago. The other is DDR400 or DDR1 RAM. Some SD RAM and we have something better. Two pieces DDR4. 4 GB each. And we have one small motherboard, Gigabyte H77N Wi Fi. This is 1155 socket DDR3 motherboard. I got this motherboard with Intel i3 CPU, but also I got this motherboard without the back IO shield and without Wi Fi and the Wi Fi antennas. So I test all these parts, except DDR1 and SD ROMs. And all these parts are in working condition. But before we do anything from this, let's do some cleaning. And first, I will start with the motherboard. Here, with the soft brush, I start with cleaning the dust and the dirt, which is all over. Also, I always leave the CPU in the socket because to protect the socket pins. After I took out the chipset heatsink, I found that somebody has applied thermal paste over the existing thermal pad. And this is not a good idea. And on top of that, here we have a too much thermal paste all over the chipset. Applying a thermal paste to the chipset is going a little bit different, but we're gonna come to that part later. After I finish with cleaning the motherboard from all sides around, it's time to remove the CPU. Here we have a thermal paste at the CPU bracket from the inside and on the plastic from the socket, which means too much thermal paste is used. Cleaning the socket requests a lot of patient and precise work, so no rushing here. The socket pins are easy to bend and damage but they're hard to repair. Now let's move to the chipset heatsink. Here, using cotton buds and 96% isopropyl alcohol, I remove the thermal paste. Now carefully, using scalper blade, I remove the thermal pad. This thermal pad is already damaged and cannot be used again. The heating surface isn't smooth and for this I need another thermal pad. But currently I don't have any of this. Anyway, there is another solution. Now, I used 1000 and 2000 grit sandpaper and little water to make the surface much smoother. Smooth surface means much better thermal conductivity. Now I can apply thermal paste on the chipset and mount the heatsink. The motherboard is looking like a new one. Now let's move to the CPUs. 
Here we have one that I took from the motherboard and two from the box. Again, I use 96% isopropyl alcohol, cotton buds and brushes. Cleaning these Intel CPUs is easier because here we don't have pins like to the IMD CPUs. But anyway, still need careful work to not damage some of the components from the bottom side or to drop the CPU. After finish with cleaning, I pack all the CPUs in a protective cases. Now the cooling fan. In this video, we're gonna use a better cooling for this build. But anyway, I'm going to clean this cooling fan. This fan is still working and still can be used somewhere else. Also, to clean the fan, I used 96% isopropyl alcohol and brushes. But this is for the part when we have electronics. The aluminum part, I wash it using soap and water. Now the cooling fan and the heatsink are looking much better. It's like a new one. Now let's take the GPU. Here we start with removing the heatsink first. Cleaning the GPU isn't hard, but we need to work carefully. Some GPUs are pretty big and heavy, and sometimes it's easy to slide from hands. Also the cooling fans to the GPU are more sensitive compared to anything else. So basically, we need to be careful to not drop the GPU, and we need to be careful while removing the cooling fans. Because the warranty sticker is not on the GPU, I think the thermal paste is changed, but a long time ago. Anyway, while cleaning dry thermal paste like this, we need a plastic sponger sticks, cotton buds, isopropyl alcohol, and soft brushes. Also, we need to pay attention at the GPU chip, because some of these small components are maybe covered with a the thermal paste, and these components will not be visible at first. And the GPU board is clean. But now let's move to the fonts and the heatsink. Here, I'm using dry soft brush to clean the fonts from the dust. Now I will re-clean the both fonts together with a cable using a 96% isopropyl alcohol and brushes. Basically with this washing I will remove the hidden dust all around and back the shine to the both cooling fonts. The plastic from the GPU together with the heatsink and the plate are different story, because here we don't have any electronics, we can wash it using soap and water. After washing, I remove the plastics and I add vinegar. Vinegar will help to back the aluminum and the copper shine. I left the heatsink some time in the water with vinegar and this is the result. The copper pipes are not dark as before. Now are looking like when they were new. Let's apply a thermal paste and as thermal paste, I used Thermal Grizzly. Personally, to the GPUs, I always use some better thermal paste, and as well, it's recommended to use something good. Thermal Grizzly is one of the best on the market, and as well, Cooler Master or Arctic Silver are a great choice. 
This is not a paid promotion or anything similar, it's a just personal experience. So, this is the GPU after cleaning. It's looking pretty fresh. Now, let's take a look at some upgrade parts that I collect. We have a new cooling, Cooler Master 212 Black Edition. We have one. 256GB A Data SSD. We have Intel i5-3330, which is going to be a better option than the Intel i3. The RAM is Kingston HyperX Genesis, 8GB in total. We have 3cm Cooler Master PCI Riser cable. The power supply is Cooler Master as well, 650 watts. This power supply is made out of two same power supplies. A while ago, I do some repairs, some restoration, and now we have something good. And the last is the PC case. For a pretty long, I have used this small computer case as eGPU case. But now, we're going to build a PC here. Now, I took the motherboard and I put the new CPU. This is just to protect the socket pins. We have to do a few modifications before we build this computer. I mount the motherboard in the case. And how you can see the PCI Express connection is to the top side. So in this case, the PCI riser cable needs to go from top to bottom. The Cooler Master PCI cable is a little bit wider. And here we have no and out space. This part of the case needs to be modified. Now, using Dremel carefully, I cut off this bottom part from the case. After I finish with the case, I return to the motherboard and the I.O. So here we have a few I.O. shields but none of them is fitting. Except this one, which can be easier modified. Again, using Dremel, I have done a few more cuts. And finally, I got something that will fit well here. As final, I use a black spray to make the I.O. looks better. So now, let's build this computer. And here we are. Finally, I built something in this small computer case. The cooling fan is a little bit out of the case and I cannot make and use some glass panels. 
Also, a glass panels won't be a good option here, because everything inside is very tight, so the temperatures will be in a very upper borders. But some covers from mesh will be okay. After I finish with building this computer, I continue with installing Windows, doing some tests, some customization, and after all, we have one pretty good, functional, and very unusual computer build. Well, this is a small unusual computer, made from older hardware. I mean, this hardware is released around 2012, like the motherboard and the CPU. And the GPU is from 2015, so this computer is about 7 to 10 years old hardware. But anyway, this computer is still good for many things. Like, I can work and do some job, I can browse the web, I can watch movies, videos, I can learn new things, and as well, I can have a, some good chilling time with some games. I played Battlefield 3 on this PC, and the game is going just pretty good. I have no lags or anything, just I have a great fun while playing. So basically, this computer is good to play some older or some newer games. It's not a high-end computer, but still is a great for many games. I wanna hang, I wanna hang with my friends. Well, and this is all about this small and unusual computer, and I'm very glad because I found use to this old hardware. I hope you enjoyed watching this video, and I hope this video will give ideas and inspiration to back some touch in function again, or do some upgrades and make the things better. Also, if you want to support my channel and my work, you can press the subscribe button. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.